The war in Ukraine has just got that more interesting with a massive, what seems to be right now, offensive, Ukrainian offensive into Kurs. In today's video, we'll be diving into all the details, all the juicy stuff, the geolocated footage. Let's get into it. Small disclaimer, I do have a baby with me, so if you hear the baby, I do apologize. Anyway, let's move on to all these villages that the Ukrainians have captured. Personally, I'm not going to pronounce all these names, but there's a lot of villages that the Ukrainians have captured. They have captured a bunch of land according to how the war has been going on. And right now, the Ukrainians, all they have entered, and according to actually um, photos, they have entered uh, Zashaha. Okay, let's just call it that for now. I'm going to get the pronunciation after this video. Uh, they've entered this city, and this city only houses like 6,000 people, but it is very strategic, and right now it does not seem like there's a lot of Russian forces present. According to a Russian civilian, the Akhmad Brigade, oh, battalion, whatever they call themselves, a group, they fled once this happened and left conscripts to be captured. We'll look into that in a little bit. So we have Ukrainian tanks and uh, armor fighting vehicles geolocated literally at the outskirts of the uh, um, city. The thing is, the Ukrainians have said nothing about this. In fact, the Ukrainians, when it first happened, denied it actually happened. And we are getting all this news from either Russian videos or Russian uh, telegram channels such as Ryber. That is all we are getting the info from. The Ukrainians are saying nothing. So it appears that when you don't make trailers for your counteroffensives or your offensives, it, they seem to go a little bit better. The thing is that a pro-Ukrainian YouTuber, Ukraine Matters, said that he had friends in Sumi that contacted him. Basically said said there were large concentration of Ukrainian troops. He didn't say anything because OPSEC. And now they've done this attack. If you look at Sumi, and we're going to go back to the Kalkiv uh, counteroffensive of 2022. There's a lot of places to hide large groups of men and vehicles. All this is forested. And force is the best place to hide. This is the same tactics the Ukrainian used during their 2022 Kolkiv Kiev counteroffensive, which, according to a lot of experts, was the most successful military counteroffensive of the 21st century, or um, at least the top 10. So this is the same tactics the Ukrainians use there. According to the latest reports from reliable YouTubers, the Ukrainians have around two brigades in, two brigades uh, following in to Russia and about tw I believe eight in reserve so that is 12 brigades now this all went under everybody's nose and this is not just some PL stunt that Ukraine planned within probably a week or two had the Freedom Russian Legion do it to get the headlines off what's going on in Donbass because Russia is taking some ground in Donbass right here it was planned for a long time so while the Ukrainians were complaining about their man uh problem their manpower problem so we all thought oh man this massive man problem issue and now they have this massive attack in sumi and like i said previously with thought that amount of brigades not saying ukraine is not facing a manpower issue they all however a lot of youtubers have brought this up that ukraine has a bunch of soldiers that are literally not doing anything just guarding places for no reason because they don't want to go and fight or to stop russian sabotagers or anything like that so that's literally could be what the ukrainians took from those men or ukraine could have played a massive deception on everybody complaining publicly about their manpower issues and that's why i thought it was weird why are you going to complain publicly when the russians can literally read the news like what in the world without just telling hey uh biden we have some serious manpower issues in private they were saying it publicly so that could have been a mass deception i don't know but that's not really what's important right now. So let's go to the details now. This map is not updated a hundred percent. It's has not been updated ever since earlier today. And yeah, so this is how it looks on the front lines right now. Much more territory under Ukrainian control, but this map just shows geolocations, and that's why I like using this map a lot. So right now we see uh, captured Russian soldiers, which I showed in the previous video, but that has nothing on these Russian soldiers, which were captured. Uh, 40 Russian soldiers captured. Actually, a YouTuber counted out, and it was 36, but I'm pretty sure there could be four that were off screen. And according to this, 
four Ukrainians captured all these 40 troops. So, according to this, likely it means these are conscripts, very poorly trained soldiers, and really that that was just bad for the Russians to have it, okay? So, let's move over here. According to Russian military bloggers, the Ukrainians have reached over here in this city. So, again, what the Ukrainians are doing is they are sending a force to advance and then a follow-up force to consolidate the gains. So, that's why you'll have this over here if that Russian military blogger is correct. But really, the Ukrainian forces to consolidate are over here. There's a concentration of force over here, according to Russian military bloggers. Ryber, there's another concentration of Ru Ukrainian forces here, so they could try to uh, come in. There is, right here, video of Russian reinforcements. Uh, it's very blurry, and I did not know why it was blurry until uh, one of these uh, mappers out, actually, the... the Man Military Summer Channel, who actually made this map, said that it could be because when Kalkiv counteroffensive of the 2022 was happening, Russia sent these videos of these um, uh, reinforcements arriving. But they were actually old videos, so they could have blurted out, so there couldn't be any clear geolocations. That's just an assumption, obviously. And that's just what he said he made of the situation. He was actually reporting daily when that. 2022 call keep counteroffensive was happening i was not i was actually not really i knew the war was going on a youtube channel that youtube banned like uh i posted the first day the war was going on it was pretty consistent but i was not into the maps like that so i'm going to take his word for it now let's move on to wikipedia to get some more info right now the russians are claiming that 1,000 soldiers 11 tanks and more than 20 ivs were in all currently doing this according to geolocated footage several armor fighting vehicles have been destroyed and a boot m1 sam system has been destroyed according to the russians so take this with a grain of salt just like we would do with the ukrainians 260 casualties six tanks two ivs four apcs three coal ak uh armor fight um, armor combat vehicles six other armored vehicles and 26 uavs and according to the russians geolocated footage um, they lost two T-62Ms, one KA-52, and six soldiers captured. That's according to uh, Confirmed. Obviously, this is, has not been updated since that picture we just showed you. And per Ukraine, one KA-52 helicopter, which that was confirmed. It could have been taken down with a drone. We honestly don't know. There's a video of a drone hitting a helicopter. but And then we see this photo of a helicopter, so we don't know that. However, it seems that Ukraine fought everybody, according to two U.S. officials, they did not know this was going to happen. Obviously, I'm pretty sure Ukraine got permission because a U.S. Uh, I think the State Department spokesperson basically said that um, Ukraine ha is not violating the U.S. rules of engagement during this conflict by doing what they're doing. So I'm pretty sure they got U.S. permission to launch something, but they did not tell when or how or how much troops they were going to put in it. It's honestly, it reminds me of the 2022 counteroffensive if it goes as successful now we don't know what's ukraine's goals in this we still don't know some people say aim for the nuclear power plant we we don't know we're gonna have to wait okay this could get crushed by the russians this could be a massive success and lead to a ukrainian victory we don't know again this like the second day literally the second day has not been a full 48 hours ever since this has started if this ends up being successful and completes ukraine's goals that could be a major embarrassment for the russians and a major setback for the russians we'll have to see this is not for pro ukrainians to start jumping up and down or pro russians to start coping we are going to actually have to see what is going on if this is going to be something serious that russia needs to worry about or if it's something that ukraine's just doing to launch a diversion right now i think how this is going on it's going to play like the call keep counteroffensive um but we don't know Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.